It's been a while and I'm sorry about that. I always get excited for starting new things and distracted from finishing the old ones. No more excuses now, let's tackle the VCOs. They might look a bit intimidating on paper, but if we break them up into functional portions, little remains. The heart of the voltage controlled oscillator is a current controlled oscillator, a simplified version of which I'll simulate in LT SPICE. The capacitor is charged by the current source until the threshold voltage of a Schmidt trigger NAND gate is crossed, which causes the capacitor to be slowly discharged over the transistor. And then the whole thing starts anew. The current source is another functional portion, which on its own is equally simple. As the simulation reveals, this arrangement gives us a sawtooth waveform. In sub-circuits, which they call curve shapers, the sawtooth is turned into other common waveforms. Clipping gives us the spaced sawtooth, rectification and a differential amplifier turns that into the triangle, a matched pair of diodes can be used to round the triangle to produce something close to a sign. And the square wave generator is just a comparator with an adjustable trigger level. All desired waveforms can be added with a resistor network. So let's apply that knowledge and repair the VCOs that need it. This one's got a bit of a problem with the square wave, apparently. This one seems fine all around, surprisingly enough, after standing around for 30 years approximately. This one's got problems for sure. It responds to potentiometer adjustments, but the frequency is way off. Anybody got some pasta sauce to go along with this? One thing I noticed right away was a roaring hot output transistor on the power supply board. And as per first law of thermodynamics, there should be another roaring hot component somewhere that has to be replaced. Luckily it was just a UA741 general purpose op-amp for which I have replacement parts, but it didn't solve the problem. And then I started recklessly feeling for other hot parts until I came across a certain wire by pure chance, which ultimately turned out to be the origin of this problem. This is the frequency coarse potentiometer, and apparently one of its terminals came loose. It's a rather expensive ceramic metal type, which makes sense because of the extended lifespan that comes with that technology. After all, this is going to be one of the mostly used potentiometers on the synthesizer. It seems repairable to a certain degree, and I'll try to do it just for fun, but I think I'll go for a new one no matter what. Anyway, this crude fix has to suffice for now, because there's still something left to repair. The triangle and sine waveforms are non-functional. And because sine is derived from triangle, as we've seen earlier, we can start debugging at the triangle wave shaper. So this is the input signal, all good here. 
and this is what arrives at the output buffer. So the problem must be somewhere in between. Starting with the usual suspects, I hooked up a component tester to one of the transistors. Hmm, the other one maybe? Nope. What now? Well, I poked around some more and found circumstances ideal. So I had to take a shot in the dark and replaced the transistors anyway and that foil capacitor because it seemed to have something like a polarity designator, which bothered me. And that did it, believe it or not. Alright, that's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.